Hi there, my name is David Greer and I'm a professor of physics at New York University. I'm also the director of NYU's Center for Soft Matter Research. And today I'm here to talk to you about tractor beams. It's appropriate because uh, this month, uh, September 2016, is the 50th anniversary of the airing of the original series of Star Trek. What I'm going to talk about today is how you make a tractor beam for real in the laboratory, because we have and they actually work. Uh, starting point is uh, an observation by uh, an astronomer in the 1500s, a guy named Peter Apian. He was able to figure out that the tails of comets always point away from the sun. 400 years ago, 1619, Johannes Kepler, he proposed that the reason comets' tails point away from the sun is because the sun's light is actually blowing on the surface of the comet, blowing dust off the surface uh, into the tail. This is a kind of amazing idea. The light from the sun can exert a force. People were thinking about this. Scientists were thinking about this in the centuries that came after. Like, is it possible that a wave uh, could exert a force? The person who brought it all together was James Clerk Maxwell. He worked out that that wave can exert forces on illuminated objects that push them. The force that we're talking about, that, that Maxwell was talking about, is repulsive. It blows things downstream. Okay, so, so that's not what a tractor beam does. A tractor beam pulls things in along the whole length. Yeah, that, that's what it's showing back there. What we were doing in my laboratory um, was to try to use the forces exerted by light to learn about uh, nature's fundamental organizing principles. And to discover those principles, we were using forces exerted by beams of light to grab microscopic objects and to organize them into three-dimensional structures, using the repulsive force of the beam of light uh, and also using, uh, using a, a special trick. If I can make a beam of light very bright in one place, then small objects can be attracted up gradients of the intensity to where the light's brightest. And that attraction of a small object to a bright place can overcome the radiation pressure so you can end up holding a thing in place. That's called optical tweezers. What my group did was to control optical tweezers with computer-generated holograms. So it's just like the hologram you might see uh, on, on a credit card or something like that. Uh, but instead of, of, of showing a picture of an eagle, what this this uh, hologram does is it encodes a distribution of light in three dimensions that will create these optical tweezer traps so that we can organize things. Is that a tractor beam? It sounds like a tractor beam. Um, it is in a sense, but it, uh, all it does is hold one thing in one place. It doesn't pull things in along the entire length. We were lucky uh, because uh, we had uh, an interesting experiment go wrong. A lot of times discoveries are made when uh, you're trying to do one thing and, and something else happens. Uh, that happened for us. We were uh, shining a new hologram onto our microscopic system and instead of uh, having the particles uh, move along the line of light that we had created, they all went to one side. The experiment was a failure. We were frustrated. So uh, we went out of the lab into the office, started working on, on blackboards, working out the equations, and we made uh, a wonderful discovery, uh, which is that in some cases the, the force which ordinarily pushes you downstream changes sign and pulls you upstream. You know, you can imagine we were really excited. So we took the theoretical result, used it to compute a hologram we needed to generate one of these new modes of light. We call them solenoid waves. And we were able to project a solenoid wave, so that's the first time this new class of beams had been projected. You, you create this beam of light that has a very weird three-dimensional structure. It doesn't look at all like the beam uh, that, that you would imagine for a, a tractor beam. These look like spirals, like helices. And if I light you up with it, it doesn't blow you downstream, it pulls you upstream along the entire length. So it is a true tractor beam in the science fiction sense. You might ask, so what? Like, what's it good for? Among the people who are interested in, in using these tractor beams are uh, folks at NASA who would uh, love to be able to outfit their cometary missions and their planetary missions with tractor beams to gather up samples of comet dust, of, of extraterrestrial dust off the surface of planets. We're actually trying to get our tractor beams working at the level that they could do that. These are actually real world applications for uh, 
for tractor booms that are coming online hopefully uh, in the next few years. You want to learn more about uh, Star Trek technology entering the real world. I want to direct you to the Smithsonian Channel's documentary, Building Star Trek. If you like this, please do subscribe to the channel and see you next time. My name is David Greer and I'm a 